Our next speaker will be um, Christian Dunkel um, from the Staatsbibliothek um, in Berlin. And he'll be speaking on the hurdles of properly presenting Japanese hand schools online, a work in progress report. And um, I don't see any slides yet, but- um, <clears throat> hi, hi there, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Um, hi, it's good to see everyone, even it's, though it's from afar. Um, I would like to thank you uh, and the organizers of the EIJRS conference uh, for having me and giving me the opportunity. And I would also like to thank you that you made it possible to do this conference in a hybrid version, um, because some of the material I'm going to show you today uh, hasn't been published yet, um, and it only works uh, on the internal library systems. So uh, being in Lisbon, I couldn't have presented. Um, so this gives me the opportunity. Um, I'm going to switch off my camera just to uh, limit the traffic. Um, and then I'm going to share my slides, uh, and I hope um, you can all see um, my entire screen now, um, and you should be seeing the slides. If not, please let me know. Um, the uh, top I'm going to present on today is um, maybe familiar to some of you, um, as probably all libraries have materials um, that have been digitized and can't be presented uh, to the wider audience uh, in a proper way, or at least not um, to the satisfaction of the librarian who would like to share uh, the materials uh, as widely and as accurate as possible. And this is what happened to our scrolls. And out of that grew a small project we have been pursuing now for almost a year. And with we, I mean uh, a colleague of mine in the IT department who works limited hours on this project, myself and uh, some colleagues from our digitization department who uh, worked or helped with editing images uh, or some of the images and with uh, further digitization uh, of parts of the scrolls. Um, to Just to say a little bit about where we are coming from, um, most of you probably know that we had a large digitization project going on until 2014, which was funded by the German Research Foundation. And uh, amongst the materials we digitized back then were also 570 titles of our pre-modern Japanese collection. And those also included 46 hand scrolls we had in our collection. In the past years, we have been fortunate with some funding to add a few scrolls. So we are about now at the number of 50 something. Um, all of this material material, uh, also the digitized versions are searchable uh, through our various catalogs and also partly uh, through the Shinyon Kodenseki Sogo uh, database. Um, to be specific, 374 titles and this is because uh, the Kokobunken had in the uh, catalog by Peter Konitsky on the European holdings of pre-modern Japanese works already catalog entries and we managed to think uh, those in cooperation with the Kokobunken to our digitized versions, so they can be searched through there or completely through uh, Japan search. And this is thanks to an effort by the Art Research Center of Ritsumeikan University, because they managed to include the metadata of our um, digitized books uh, into their search engine and are supplying those uh, metadata to uh, the Japan search platform. And if you enter Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin as a search term uh, in Japan search, you will uh, get a huge amount uh, of the material that we have digitized, not just Japanese books, but also I think European ones that uh, come probably through uh, the Europeana uh, portal site. Um, all the images and the data are publicly available via the digitized collections of um, our library. And we were lucky enough um, with the beginning of our project back then uh, that we were, uh, or we had to use the library's presentation platform and also its viewer technology that gave a lot of advantages, but also came with some limitations. And I'm just gonna show you um, uh, 
a few examples. Um, I hope you can see now um, the viewer of our um, digitized collections in the library. And this is basically what you end up when searching for a title. Uh, regardless of the point of entry where you search, uh, you have the VO page um, and then you have structural metadata on the left hand side. Um, in this case, uh, just text parts of the scroll contents. You have a lot of functions, but uh, what I want to show you uh, mainly is if you look at the thumbnail overview, um, what you can see is that uh, even if the scrolls uh, or the material is a scroll or two scrolls in this case, um, it's just presented as single images. Um, single images, uh, just like, um, let me go back and, oh, sorry. Uh, and have a look at how books are presented, then it's the same thing. Um, one page image or one image per page, um, just um, the book presentation mode. Uh, and we didn't uh, found a way yet, um, or actually we did because we're doing the project, but uh, back then there was no way into uh, presenting the scrolls properly. Although a colleague of mine and I uh, already in 2012 uh, wrote a paper for IT department uh, with specifications of how we would like to have our scrolls presented. But given the small number, um, back then only 46 scrolls um, and also limited resources in the IT department, um, it wasn't really a priority uh, for them to help us out with uh, presenting the scrolls um, as a um, scroll. And there have been other projects, many of you know them. I just listed a few of them um, in the order I came across them over the past years. Um, and these are all presentations of scrolls or collections of scrolls um, bound to some project somehow. Um, and um, they all found a specific way of presenting the scrolls that probably fitted um, their resources and uh, needs best. Um, if you look, for example, at the um, Seattle Art Museum, I'm just going to show you three examples. The Seattle Art Museum, who got a funding from the Getty Foundation and was able to um, build a larger site uh, around their Chinese collection. And this is hand scrolls and also hanging scrolls. But um, if you look at the material uh, or explore the site, um, you can see that there's a lot of metadata uh, available. They even uh, um, had time to um, translate the uh, inscriptions, their essays. Um, you can leave comments. Um, and of course, you can. Uh, navigate uh, through the scroll uh, and have it uh, or have an entire look at it. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the Hatiman Scrolls project at the University of Heidelberg. Professor traded it a few years ago uh, in cooperation with several Japanese institutions. Uh, she did a comparison um, of different versions of the same theme uh, or different copies um, of the same theme. Um, and what they did, um, they even um, annotated um, um, the text and translated it, uh, grouped um, different uh, parts of the images uh, together. And you got a lot of metadata. But uh, still, um, you have a specific viewer technology um, behind um, the project. Um, and the Japanese um, examples or the examples from Japanese institutions I listed here um, are just randomly picked. Um, there are many, many more. Um, just wanted to draw because I saw Egami-san online that the Nichibunken put um, their scrolls in a renewed version online just this week. Um, so, um, but I'm going to open a collection of the Bukyo University um, because that brings me to my next um, topic. Um, if you look at the scrolls and open them, here you can see already um, that institutions start to use IIIF viewer technology, uh, in this case, the Mirador viewer, um, and you can uh, freely navigate um, to the image. Um, but, um, and this is a specification of our project, if you look at the IIIF manifest of that uh, viewer and have a closer look at the um, 
uh, manifest, you can see that it is a single image uh, um, stored uh, at some place uh, being displayed in this viewer. And with the um, yeah, development of IIIF technology in the recent years, the head of our department um, already a few years ago had the idea that somehow um, given our limited resources and already having the images of the scrolls, wouldn't it be possible to use IIIF technology to provide a solution for us with the most limited um, use of time um, and resources. <laughs> And so we started to have a look around and actually we found um, a blog entry or two blog entries by uh, Nagasaki Sensei, who many of you know uh, from his various presentations at EAJRS conferences or also on other occasions. Um, and in his blog, um, already in 2017, he described a way um, where you can assemble uh, scrolls and view them as a proper scroll uh, using IIIF technology um, with very, very um, low, efforts. Um, and what you basically do um, in his description is you create a virtual canvas um, with the help of uh, IIIF, um, and then you put uh, the images uh, on this canvas um, and stitch them virtually together. Um, then you just have to, and this is a screenshot um, of one of the scrolls we have been already doing, um, you then you use an image editing software basically and you uh, put an image on that um, make it uh, semi-translucent and then you take the next image in line and align it to that image and then you uh, just take the pixel coordinates where the image properly should be um, put them into a table um, and once you're done with all the images um, you just um, as you can see here, have to calculate um, all the positions of the images uh, on the virtual canvas. You put that then into the JSON file um, and also the image addresses. And basically um, you can tell you triple IF viewer then uh, with the help of this manifest how the scroll should be assembled. There's of course more um, technological details uh, in that, but um, that was a part of my colleague from the IT department um, who handled everything concerned the viewer. Um, I just did mainly uh, the image editing and uh, assembling the manifests. Um, and then um, you have to store the manifest somewhere. In our case, we are lucky because we have, um, as you can see uh, on the lower left side, um, the cross so-called Cross Asia ITR uh, in situ, um, yeah, uh, uh, integrated text repository, I can, think they call it. Um, and this is a basically a storage environment where we put a lot of our full text data we get from when we license databases um, and we when we got the uh, rights to do so, um, where we also put uh, images, um, all kinds of stuff, um, basically, and also the scroll manifests. And then we have the viewer technology now uh, on a web future website that uh, is going to be uh, online probably by the end of the year. And when a viewer or a user comes uh, opening the viewer um, and using the manifest, basically the manifest tells the viewer where to get the images from. And um, the images are taken basically from the digitized collections I showed you before. So they are stored in the archives over there. Uh, you don't have to duplicate them somewhere. We don't have to store them uh, separately. Um, and um, yeah, that's an easier way for us um, to proceed with the technology. But now I'm going to show you what we have been uh, doing and building. And I hope you can see um, a draft version of the website that will be online hopefully by December this year. Um, you can see it's in German only right now. We need to make at least an English version as well. Um, there are limited um, um, explanatory texts. And um, as probably some of you noticed, it's WordPress mentioned before already in, during this conference. Uh, some um, thing we have to put up with because the library uh, is using WordPress for all its web presentations and we are to follow uh, that regulation. 
And what we basically do is, or have done by now, uh, we edited 17 scrolls already and put some metadata. And the way it is layouted right now isn't satisfactory for me and for other colleagues. We need to think about that. But uh, so far, um, we've done a, a version that can be shown. And once you click uh, on the image, um, you are uh, referred to um, the um, viewer version, uh, which again isn't layouted um, the way it should be, but um, as you can see, it works. And you can um, see the uh, scroll in its, in its entirety. But what you can also see when you click on uh, layers is that the entire scroll is composed of single images. And once you, oh, wrong image. Uh, once you limit the opacity of one image, it's gone from the canvas. Um, so this is the, the entire scroll. Um, we have also done um, a version um, in the look and feel of the uh, cross Asia environment, uh, which is probably to be gonna be the layout version for the uh, entire project, but we still have problems here again with the uh, spaces um, and also with the uh, way the metadata of the scroll is presented. Um, but um, it's the same thing. Um, you can scroll uh, through the version and I'm just going to zoom in, uh, go to full view. Um, as you can see, this is really actually it's 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 a fun scroll uh, because it depicts the uh, procession of uh, Tokugawa Shogunal daughter um, on her way out of the castle um, marrying uh, some high-ranking daimyo. Um, and this is the end of the procession, people looking like having a hangover. Um, and the back of the procession is quite unorderly. Um, and you can see all the people with the reddened eyes. Um, That's really fun. And uh, what you can also see is we have um, some uh, problems still with the uh, performance of the server, with the uh, response time. Um, and so you go on and on and on and um, can have a look uh, at the scrolls. So hopefully someday um, um, by the end of the year in a, in a much better uh, layout. But um, to the problems, um, the hurdles we encountered uh, were mainly image related. Um, as you can see, these are, um, or this is one image, um, how the images we had um, taken back in the digitization project looked like. And you can see on the right, and the left-hand side of the image, um, uh, the remaining parts of the scrolls rolled up. And this is how the images looked like. And um, when you uh, consider the technique we are using that we uh, put, um, the images on the canvas like fish scales, uh, one upon the next one. Um, you can't do that with this kind of image because um, there would always be a part of a scroll uh, to be seen. Um, and so what you have to do is you have to edit the images, cut the ends off, and hope for the best that uh, the text lines um, still there are matching uh, the next image and that there are still enough uh, length of the scroll left to get a proper uh, overlay. Um, the other thing is um, problem back then or created back then by the colleagues who digitized the material. Back then they thought once in the near future we would be able to stitch all these scrolls together so we take images as wide as possible um, so we have to stitch together fewer images and save time than when once we assemble the scrolls. But what happens is, especially with the with the early sutra scrolls and the thin paper they are on, um, it bends over. So you can see a slight curving on each side. Um, it's almost like a fan shape, uh, very, very slightly. But um, that leads to um, 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 problems when overlapping. Um, at the top of the, um, when you lay um, the images together or upon each other, um, the characters match perfectly, but um, 
further down this line, um, it looks really irritating. Um, and the same happens with other scrolls. Um, as you can see, the Hentagana on top of the line um, is merging perfectly, but further down, um, um, it's not acceptable. And if you do so, um, you have uh, flaws uh, in the at, at the uh, edge of the overlapping image. Um, and this um, isn't quite the way uh, we wanted to roll the scrolls to look like. Um, and this is one reason why the colleague in the digitization department had to re photograph uh, quite a lot uh, of the scrolls because um, the images from back then weren't always fit um, to do um, or to serve the purposes we were following. Another thing is, uh, which we didn't notice, is that there was even uneven lighting uh, during um, the digitization back then. So once you uh, put the images together, you have uh, small shadows uh, marking um, the edge of the uh, overlaying image. So you have to cut away a further line and then you end up with this uh, much better uh, version, but still um, the uh, um, edge of the image is visible. And this goes even worse uh, with uh, other scrolls um, with the um, shadows um, and the uneven lighting that the background of the scrolls uh, looks really uh, dark um, in comparison to the next image um, and also slightly curved. And I would like to show you um, just one example because we put that online as well, uh, just for demonstration. Um, how a scroll looks like when it is uh, done with uh, uneven images. Uh, here's an example of what happens when you miscalculate the pixel coordinates, then it looks like, uh, yeah, badly done. Um, but also um, with, the, with the shadows and the uneven lighting, uh, and this was uh, done just a few years ago, the photography, um, you have always um, the edge of the next image noticeable, um, and this is not the way uh, we would like to present a scroll, so we have to take new images. Um, to uh, come to an end, um, the lessons learned um, so far um, uh, that it is really vital uh, which kind of images you use, uh, and that uh, maybe images taken under different uh, circumstances 10 years ago, 15 years ago, are not fit uh, for new technologies. So there is the risk that uh, you really have uh, to carefully consider what you want to do with the images in the future. Um, and um, also, uh, a lesson learned is that um, there is no one way of properly presenting the scrolls. Um, this example I presented today fits our purposes and um, it also fits our resources because we don't uh, have much time. It started out, out as a site project for all the people involved. And it was just something to do on Friday afternoon for a year and then it should be finished. But it turned out that um, it is not as easy as the head of our department thought. Um, and we have invested quite some time already um, into the project. Um, and the remaining tasks, um, um, we still have to solve the layout questions and the response time of the server. Um, we are not quite finished with what kind of metadata to include in the manifests and um, the explanatory text for the website are still not written. And uh, probably the main thing, uh, there are still 30 more scrolls to go. Uh, we have done 17, um, 30 more. Um, we'll have to follow. Some are under work already, but um, it's it's not yet finished. And for future development and applications, um, one thing comes to mind, other, if you want to call it oversized materials, um, especially maps. We did some tryouts with uh, large Japanese maps. We had already digitized as well. Um, and as long as you 
just align images uh, in a row. That's no problem. It works fine. We also did a try with uh, a larger map uh, with uh, six images, three in an upper row, three in a lower row. It also worked. Um, it's a little bit more complicated when calculating the coordinates, but um, it works. Uh, but there again, um, we were uh, drawn back by um, the quality and the uh, alignment of the images. Um, so um, you ha we had to edit uh, all those images uh, by hand. And this makes the entire process very, very slow because uh, the method um, Nagasaki Sensei suggested, um, and he's right in that, if you have okay-ish images, uh, it takes you about an hour, an hour and a half to um, do the alignment of the images uh, and get the coordinates and write the manifest and everything um, that is really fast. But once you have to start to um, reconsider the images and edit them uh, over and over again until they uh, match, um, that really takes time. So we are now about at six hours for the scrolls with the bad images um, for the editing. Um, and the ones with the good images are really done in an hour and a half. Um, so that really makes a difference. Um, and yeah, for the maps goes the same. And the other thing is that we have an annotation tool uh, under development for our image collections, just as uh, uh, was just uh, introduced um, or a similar a thing that was as was just introduced with the photographic images from the Shiba Savaiichi collection. Um, and um, some people in our department think that uh, it would be good to include the scrolls as well. So uh, they could be edited uh, either by registered uh, people or through a crowdsourcing project. But I'm not really sure how many people would be interested um, in dealing that and maybe um, that uh, the 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 how do you say the effort uh, the technical effort that has to be put into such and further development wouldn't really uh, justify um, the uh, results that could come out of such a project. And with this, I would like to end my presentation and thank you very much for listening. And I will stop the slides and open. Um, my camera. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions in the room or in the chat? I have a couple. Question. It's Hamish. It's uh, really good to see you. Um, Hi. Um, a very timely presentation. Um, because we're trying to do similar things with scrolls, just Japanese. I have really difficulties hearing you. Okay, sorry. Um, Better. We're just trying to do the same thing at the British Library with um, East Asian scrolls and uh, medieval scrolls. I don't understand the technical details of what you were talking about, but would it be okay if I put our technical people in touch with you? Yeah, no problems. Yeah, yeah. What we also plan to do is, I mean, with the viewer technology, we are not using the one um, Nagasaki Sensei was suggesting. Um, our IT person used something the US uh, institutions used that open sea dragon viewer with a few manipulations and but he's going to put all the because it's an open source thing and he got it only from GitHub. Um, he's putting everything, all the documentation on GitHub as well. So that would be next year sometime. So that, would, but we are happy to share, no problem. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Very really interesting presentation. And uh, I just make sure, so I understand your IT department help this and you don't use some uh, already ready-made and platform which you can buy in base base or you develop from uh, because yeah many different um, platform you can use already in market but you don't use but you made scratch because it, it none of them is fit to use your purpose right 
Um, I, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know okay. any ready-made platform um, that would be able to present scrolls. Um, oh, okay, but but scroll, but the, you, the, but the library, your library use already a digital library, so you have another platform and it is um, ready-made one? Uh, no. Um, the the um, the digitized collections of the library is something that our library IT department is constantly developing and uh, developed like uh, 15 years ago, and that is uh, the main yeah. platform for digitized objects for the entire library. Yeah. But that platform doesn't handle scrolls. No, um, no. There's no way. So we had to find um, a different way of presenting the scrolls. And okay. what we are now doing is just one IT person a few hours a week, me and the digitization section, assembling everything. And okay. the thing you saw, the website, mm -hmm. that is WordPress. That is, um, hey. the, the you can, and our oh. IT guy just um, inserted the viewer technology into WordPress, okay. in, into a WordPress window. So, so, so that works mm -hmm. very easily. And mm. and you may you mean this and uh, today's presentation is especially made uh, tailor made for scrollers. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. But it but it also works with maps. Mm, oh yeah, maps big bigger maps. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And the. Uh, uh, if we take contact with you, maybe sometimes you, 80 person, may help the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other, uh, one more up, up, up here? Um, hello, I, I'd like to ask a, a question because um, if you, there are so many apps where you can stitch together, like to make uh, HD quality or stitch images together. So I was wondering why you, you are working, making it manually HTML. Why don't you use a, an app to stitch the images together? Um. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's a good question. Um, the thing is, um, what I've been showing the, the the other presentations from the other institutions, uh, what they basically did back then, and, and some of those projects had been online already 10 years ago. Um, what they did, they they uh, edited the entire scroll and put it together and had have an image, store, a huge image stored somewhere um, and made it somehow viewable by um, faceting the entire large image. Um, and the thing uh, we thought about was we have the images. We don't want to put too much time into uh, editing, editing everything. Um, and we just uh, do it quick and dirty somehow. But it turned out that the images are not fit for doing it uh, this way. So it, it, it's, it's, a larger, it's a larger thing. And, um, one thing is that we wanted to have uh, um, with all the software and the apps and everything, um, the library can't provide it. Um, and uh, another thing our department is doing, we have a website on, or the Cross Asia website has several thematic portal undersites where we introduce parts of our collection in more depth. Um, and as the scrolls are part of the pre-modern Japanese collection, we wanted to have a special place where we can also uh, introduce our users, viewers from all over the world to that part um, of the uh, collection as well. So we needed uh, some technology that would fit into um, that environment. Thank you so much. Um, I think we'll stop here. There's a, I think Helena has a few words. Um, now before we but but first let's uh...